Now let us learn how we can combine time division multiplex signal with a pulse code modulation. So to be very honest, we will be we will need two information signals, the two channel signals. So we have here, say this is two kilohertz sine wave. So we are having this two kilohertz sine wave whose frequency and uh, whose amplitude we can change. So this is my one channel which is a two kilohertz signal. Next, I have here another signal which is a four kilohertz sine wave and I can change its amplitude also here. So that is the four kilohertz sine wave. So if by time delay multiplexing technique, if I multiplex these two signals through a sample and hold circuitry and then next, we all know that I will be having an analog to digital converter block and then this uh, parallel to serial out. So let's connect first these two signals to a TDM circuit. So this is a channel one input. So we are connecting here a sine wave. So this is a channel one input. <coughs> let's connect channel two to a second channel. So we have connected here. This is a channel one. We have connected here two kilohertz. We can see. Then we have connected at this point a channel two, which is a four kilohertz signal. So this is a four kilohertz signal. This is a time division multiplexing circuit. This is a sample and hold circuit. We can check here. This is a time division multiplex sample and hold output of these two channels. If I reduce the amplitude of any one channel, you can see that only those samples of channel one are going down. If I reduce the amplitude of channel two, then only those samples are going down. So this is a time division multiplexing of these two channels. Now here again, there is a A to D converter block. Then A to D converter is converting corresponding samples into 8-bit digital data. This parallel data is going inside a shift register, which is working on a principle of parallel in and serial out. So my data I am getting here at the output of this pulse code modulation transmitter, which is having a time division multiplex input. So that data is available. So I am giving it to a demodulator. Now we all know <coughs> to having a 100% communication between time division multiplexing and demultiplexing or a modulator on a demodulator or a transmitter on a receiver, you need to send first data. Second, I need to send a clock. So I am connecting this clock from this modulation to demodulation because both should work at the same clock speed and they should have a synchronization also. So I am connecting the sync pulse from this point to this synchronization circuit. Now this serial data which is coming out of this modulation is being accepted at the receiver or demodulator that serial data is then converted into a parallel data by this serial in and parallel shift register. The serial in and parallel shift register is giving 8-bit output data which is an input to a D2A converter. This D2A converter is converting that 8-bit data into a corresponding sample signal of respective channels. So at the output of here, we can see that again there will be a multi-multiplexed <coughs> TDM signal. This TDM signal that is the D2A output, digital to analog output of your uh, multiplex signal. Now here it is demultiplexed and we can see that here we are getting the channel 1 samples. Here we are getting the channel 1 samples, demultiplex channel 1 samples. At this point, at this point we are getting channel 2, at this point we are getting, at this point we are getting channel 2 demultiplexed samples. Now this channel 2 demultiplex samples. Now, with these two low pass filters, with these two low pass filters, we will remove the high frequency signal from this sampled signal of channel 1 and we will derive the baseband signal, which is a 1 kilohertz sine wave, a 2 kilohertz sine wave, I'm sorry, 2 kilohertz sine wave. The same way you will observe this 4 kilohertz sine wave signal at the second channel receiver. So this is the 4 kilohertz sine wave. If I lower the amplitude at transmitter, you can see that at receiver also the amplitude is changing. So it's perfectly working. The time division multiplex, PCM, modulation and demodulation is happening. If I connect this to channel 1 and if I change the channel 1's amplitude at transmitter, we can see that yes, its amplitude is also going down. So that's fantastically it's working. So this is how we have established time division multiplex pulse code modulation and time division multiplex pulse code demodulation. Two channels we multiplex and then that sample signal we converted through A to D converter into the PC. Now again, <coughs> to send three signals from transmitter to receiver, data, clock and sync, it's a bit difficult task. So how can we achieve this into the system? 
So let me first remove this, this synchronization. So now this is will be working as the mode 2 configuration because I am using two wires. Earlier was the mode 3 because we were having three signals between modulation and demodulation circuit. That was the PCM data, the clock and the sync. Now this is a mode 2 communication between transmitter and the receiver with data and the clock. And sync we will achieve by a special circuit which is called as a pseudo random code generator block. So it will generate a pseudo random code and it will be detected at the receiver. So this is a pseudo random code generator. So I will switch it on here. The same at this demodulation, there is a pseudo random code detector. So I am switching it on there. So this is how I have achieved the synchronization. Now you can see, still I have reduced one wire and synchronization I am, we have achieved by adding this pseudo random code generator at transmitter or modulator block and a pseudo random code detector at the receiver block. And we are getting same channel 1 signal at this point, same signal. <coughs> And similarly, we are getting channel 2 signal at this point. So we are getting channel 2 at this point. Even if I lower its amplitude, you can see that channel 2 amplitude at the receiver is changing. The same which I am changing at the transmitter. Now, this is we have learned through a sine wave by connecting a sine wave. Now, let's do this experiment in a different way. Now, let's understand it in a different way. Let me connect a constant DC signal to one channel. So I am connecting a constant DC signal to one channel. And the same signal we are connecting to the channel 2. So same signal we are connecting to the channel 2. Or let's ground this signal. So let's do not connect any signal to this channel 2. So channel 2, I am not connecting any signal. Now, how this pseudo random bit gets added? So this bit gets added every after the 8 bit, at the beginning of the 8 bit. So for example, let's see the PCM output. Let's connect this PCM data. So now there is a fixed data because so you can see that. You, we can change the data what we are giving. Say for example, right now I am giving this 101011. I am giving data 101 and all 0. So let us put it at all glowing. So let's put it at all glowing. So this is the uh, all glowing. So this is the all one. So this is the data, which is the PCM data, and we set it at this point. And you know the same signal we are getting at receiver as well. All LEDs at D2A converter at receiver end are glowing the same as they were glowing at transmitter and synchronization is actually through a pseudo random port. So now let me show you that this is our data see for example I am just switching it off the pseudo random port. I am switching it off this pseudo random bit so I have not added the sync pulse right now and this is my data this is my data so let me stop this for a moment now you can see that how my this data is this is again this then again it is repeating so if you see that my data is basically the same these two pulses then this then add up to this this data is then again it is repeating so let me do like this so these two pulses then this bit then up to this then again these two pulses then again this then again these two pulses and again this and so on so right now there is no synchronization bit is added in. this is the same data 8 bit data which we are getting at the tdm PCM output. This is the A to B converters and then parallel to serial output we are observing. So this data we are observing. Now let's again observe the data with this pseudo random bits get added with this data which acts as a synchronization. So I am just adding this and now let's see here the same data but now the pseudo random bit code is gets added with each 8 bits. You can see that now this is the data it ends at over here but now this pseudo random bit gets added before the data from here to here then again this data is coming so this data is coming this data is ending at this point but again this start bit gets added so this is how a pseudo random it's a random bit gets added every 8 bit frame and that is being forwarded to the receiver and this is how the pseudo random bit gets added and the same sequence it has been detected at the receiver and you get the signal in uh, at receiver from transmitter and receiver so we are achieving the 100% communication between this transmitter and receiver by using only two signals that is PCM data and the clock and synchronization we are achieving with the help of this pseudo random code we are the pseudo random code on pseudo random code on now you can see we are setting a data here through this potentiometer I am changing so data what we are sending from here is double zero one double one zero one three zero the same we are receiving at receiver D2A converter double one zero one and triple zero if I change this again, say for example, if I change this data to 1, 0, triple 1, double 0, we are receiving the data 1, 0, triple 1 and double 0 at receiver. So pseudo random bit, pseudo random code is used 
in TDM TCM for synchronization. But now again, we know that practically it is difficult to send clock and the data together to the uh, at the receiver. So what next? Let's remove this clock signal as well. So I'm removing the clock from here. So we are removing the clock from here. Then how we are going to derive the clock? We know that the synchronization bit is coming with this data and from that synchronization bit we will derive the clock. So let's connect this TDM PCM data to a clock recovery circuit. So this is a clock recovery circuit. This clock recovery circuit will generate or will uh, generate the clock from synchronization bit and it is available at this point. So I am connecting to this receiver clock and now we can see that again my data is 101100. So 101100. If I change the data, so now data is 1001 and all four zeros, uh, all three zeros. The same data I am getting 1001100. If I lower this, so at this point, this point is 0 and all 1. So at receiver also it is 0 and all 1. So this is how we are getting a communication between transmitter and receiver through only one wire which is the data. Data is having the same bit which is used for synchronization. From that synchronization bit we are extracting with the help of this pulse generator, the phase detector and the PLL we derive the clock and that clock is being used to drive this shift register and into D to A converter at the receiver. So this is how we are achieving a communication between modulation and demodulation which is working on TDM PCM modulation and TDM PCM demodulation by using only one wire and that is the reason it is called as mode 1 communication because it is, it is only sending the data from transmitter and receiver. So this is how we learn three different ways of establishing the communication link between time division multiplex pulse code modulation and time division multiplex pulse code demodulation. Modulation. The first way is to send data clock and symbols from transmitter to receiver. The second way of establishing it is you send data and clock and we have achieved the synchronization by adding a pseudo random code bit at transmitter and a pseudo random code bit detector at the receiver. So when I reduce one communication link between transmitter and receiver, my transmitter circuit and receiver circuit becomes more complex because now I am having a pseudo random code generator at the transmitter end and pseudo random code detector at the receiver end for synchronization. Next way of doing it, only send data and from data we are using a PLL which extracts the clock from the sink or which generates the clock from the sink pulse and for sink there is a pseudo random code generator and pseudo random code detector. So receiver again becomes more complex compared to mode 1 and mode 2 way of communication, a mode 3 and mode 2 way of communication. So this is how we learn that how our time division multiplexing pulse code modulation and demodulation is working. We have also seen the simple pulse code modulation and demodulation and then we switched over to the time division multiplexing pulse code modulation and demodulation.